And then, um, well, you've already mentioned Jan and Ray, I think, uh, in your uh, introduction. Uh, myself, I'm working for Minerva Art Academy, and Jan Kroeg is one of the teachers of the MedTech departments. And Ray is a student of the MedTech department, and together we will do this presentation for you. And I will start by sharing our uh, PowerPoint presentation, which I will do now. And if it's correct, you can see it now. Um, and I will quickly walk through the first uh, slides for you so that we have lots of time in the end to uh, answer any questions you might still have. And you can already ask them in the chat and Ray will uh, see if she can already answer something or um, we can save them until the end. Well, first of all, we are today here to talk about um, the Masters of Arts in Fine Art and Design of the Frank Moore Institute, which is part of Minerva Art Academy in Groningen, part of Hans University. Um, well, we've already said something about the presenters, which is me and Jan Kloeg and Ray. Um, I will talk about um, Dutch fine art study environments, uh, what you can expect from studying art and design in the Netherlands, some market developments and about Groningen and the Hans University. And then Jan will talk about Minerva Art Academy and the Frank Moore Institute. And we have lots of time for questions and answers about anything you might want to ask. So first up, why would you want to study fine art and design in the Netherlands? Well, I can tell you that um, the, the Netherlands has a rich history in art and uh, design and we have, um, of course, uh, many Dutch masters that are uh, known throughout the world. Works of these masters are sprinkled throughout the country and you, we have lots of museums where you can find them in. Um, we'd like to say we are a breeding ground for innovation, for creativity and design and we have a strong educational system as part of that. Um, something good to know about the domain of arts in the Netherlands is that we have some core values. Um, we have a core value that is creativity as a goal unto itself. Critical thinking and social engagement, freedom and tolerance are very important parts. Um, our international, uh, for English taught problems, our um, programs are internationally recognized. We have a multicultural um, environment and affordable study costs. And you can say that the Netherlands is a gateway to Europe. When Once you are in the Netherlands, it's uh, very easy to travel uh, through the countries of Europe to different cultural hot hotspots such as London and Berlin or other areas in Europe. That is as long as we are getting out of this COVID restrictions that are now unfortunately happening. Um, something also good to know about studying in the Netherlands is something about our uh, um, educational system. We have research universities and universities of applied sciences. And for research universities, um, bachelors are uh, three years, masters are one to two years long, and you can uh, apply for a PhD. And the main characteristics of these studies is that they are highly theoretical and uh, uh, aimed at, re at theoretical research. Whereas the universities of applied sciences, such as Hansa University, have four year long bachelor's and one to two year uh, master's, you can now apply for an artistic PhD or a postdoctorate once you have done this uh, applied master's. And the main characteristics that are different from the research universities is that it's highly practical and it's skills driven. Um, they are product based and entrepreneurial and they uh, use applied research so they are very much connected to the context in which you are studying. Then something about uh, fine art study environments. We have 18 different art academies in the Netherlands that are both part of research universities and universities of applied sciences and you can study all kinds of um, art directions such as design, fine art, music, dance, theater, film, architecture, circus all things in between. Mostly these studies are small scale. They are not very large mass studies, but uh, aimed at a personal, at a very much more personal level. And we have high standard selection criteria. And that means mostly that we um, ask people to do an admission before you start your art study in the Netherlands. 
um, and we can talk about what that means uh, later on because that is a question that many of the, our students have before they start. Um, the art education in the Netherlands is very good. We have a low dropout rate and low numbers of switches once they started. And we also have many alumni that are, end up in having uh, good jobs. Then this is an overview of the different universities of applied sciences that are uh, host, housing some art uh, studies. Well, Hansa UAS is one of them. I will quickly go through this because you can read you can read about this online. Then some market developments that are important to know. Um, it explains why it is useful to do a master's or an art bachelor even in the Netherlands. Um, you can see that um, in different domains, there is an increasing interest in the arts and we can contribute uh, with our arts to different societal issues such as healthy aging and quality of life. And the skills of artists are highly value, uh, more highly valued than they were before. And uh, if you have a master's degree, it means that you have a um, better career perspective. For example, you can uh, more easily get funding for your artworks or you can um, head out and teach arts and you can enhance your presentations, which gives you, gives you also more opportunities. Um, well, Hansa University, um, is situated in Groningen. It's a very northern university. Um, it is rooted in the, re in the region, so we are um, very uh, much cooperating with uh, our regional actors. But we are also very. We have a lot of partnerships with other uh, institutions in the Netherlands and in the world. Even we are also very international. Um, then about Groningen. We have, um, well, if you have to compare the city, it's, uh, I think, a middle average city. It depends a lot on where you're from, I think, and what your reference is. But uh, for the Netherlands, we are not uh, the biggest city, but we're also not a very small city. Um, we have a very compact city center, uh, and it's easy to find everything there. It's very uh, safe and compact. and because of the fact that we are a student city, it means that we have the youngest population in the Netherlands. About 50% of the inhabitants is younger than 35 years of age. And that reflects also in the way um, facilities are offered in the city. We have a very vibrant nightlife, for example, and a very vibrant uh, cultural and arts um, environments. Um, there's lots of student initiatives and social gatherings and events. We are the second cultural city of the Netherlands with lots of museums and exhibitions and cultural events and festivals. And we won student city award in two years in a row. Um, you can see some pictures that are characteristic for Groningen and you can find many more. I think it's a beautiful city to live in. Um, then lastly, before I head over to Jan, um, the Frank Moore Institute is part of Minerva Art Academy, and we are not situated on the campus of Hansa University, but in the middle of the center of Groningen. Um, about half of the student population at Minerva is an international population. We offer different art bachelors, and two of them are English taught. It's a fine arts and a design bachelor. And then we have our master institute, the Frank Moore Institute, that offers the master in fine art and design. And in that uh, program, you can choose whether you want to do painting, uh, MedTech, which is more technology based, and our new master, Interrelational Art Practices. And together, uh, we've uh, formed this very um, social and dynamic community of both national and international students and crossovers between all of our programs. Well, that was a really quick run through of our. Um, general information about Hansa and Minerva and then I will switch to the Frank Moore Institute and give the floor to Jan to talk about this. Thank you Nikki. Indeed uh, the Frank Moore Institute uh, grew with a new master. Um, actually it's uh, uh, you choose for this master of fine art and design but there are different directions which you also apply for in the beginning either painting, medtech uh, or IREP. And um, 
although they are separate, um, there's also many courses um, together. So it's uh, it's a community, but with each with a special program and a setup. And I will try to explain the differences to you. The uh, Frank Moore Institute itself, it's part of Minerva Art Academy, and uh, which in itself is part of the Hanse University of Applied Science. Um, the Frank Moore Institute exists already since uh, at least 2000, um, in some other form, maybe even longer. Um, we have um, an internationally uh, recognized degree uh, in Master of Arts in Fine Art and Design. And the duration of this master is two years. Um, at this moment, there is um, 20 students uh, in the painting program, of which 11 in the first year, 23 in math tech, of, of which 16 in the first year. And um, IREP um, has six students, which is uh, not no second year student because they just started this year. Um, okay, next slide, please. Here you see um, our building at the Predinia Single, which is like the center of the Frank Moore Institute. It used to be a museum of nature. Um, now in this uh, part are the uh, studios for math tech and for painting, at least most of the studios. Uh, there are some external locations um, because we want to give uh, a studio space for each student. So um, that yeah demands quite some space. Um, on the right photo, you will see um, the attachment to this old building. And this is uh, where uh, most of the painting studios are housed. Um, Mad Tech is mainly in the other building. And IREP uh, has a different setup. They uh, meet only once every week for a, a common uh, encounter and for the rest uh, people are embedded in projects which are um, in the outside world next slide please uh, one thing i forgot about the previous uh, slide <laughs> was the mentioning of the kitchen um, because that's also here it's a common uh, kitchen where students can cook and uh, again, uh, Ray will be, uh, yeah, uh, can tell you more about the situation at this moment. Uh, at this moment, everything is a bit limited. Students still have their studio spaces, but the kitchen at this moment is uh, yeah, not uh, the place that it is intended for, which is like the center for the community where everybody can meet and chat. So an important place, um, although at this moment, um, yeah, not, for this central place. Okay, now we can go to the next slide. When you come to this uh, Frank Moore Institute, um, the main uh, yeah, uh, uh, endeavor is to find new pathways. So um, the emphasis is on experimental and critical uh, environment. And uh, people come here to develop their ideas and um, uh, projects further. So it is important that you already have uh, a practice which you want to develop further, or if you come directly from the bachelor, that you already have ideas for what demands more attention and what, um, yeah, what you would like to research. For this, you will need an exploratory mindset and um, so um, it's yeah about shaping your artistic practice and um, to facilitate uh, this uh, developing of the vision um, there are um, many um, possibilities to um, show your work to um, discuss your work um, and this is all uh, embedded in the curriculum which i will explain now so uh, maybe next slide please so it's a very special master program. I'm happy to work there now for 11 years at the MATEC department. Um, it is small scale uh, in, its, in a sense because it's very personal. So we look at students individually uh, at each process 
at uh, each um, yeah developing of the artistic practice um, so it's not a mass class in a way it is a uh, yeah innovative that it, uh, the way that it's set up and also it is uh, interdisciplinary very international people come from all over the world studio based learning so everybody will get a studio place to work in for uh, painting students that mostly is um, uh, an own studio where can, people can work. Matic uh, students uh, have uh, shared studio places, but they have their own uh, study, uh, yeah, their own studio space in that. And um, IREP, um, yeah, has one common place to uh, encounter. But uh, next to this, there is lots of space to display your work. For example, you will see uh, in the picture the big, yeah, one of the big showrooms of the um, former museum, um, which is a beautiful place to show artworks. And of course, um, yeah, a focus of ours is uh, also the entrepreneurial and networking skills, which of course is important for the employability. Next slide, please. We have an overview of the three programs for you, um, of painting, mad tech, and IREP. And um, although they are described in detail, um, they are very similar in setup. The first year is for broadening your horizon, for learning new pathways, and um, developing new skills or ideas. And the second year is more towards um, yeah, working to narrow down your focus and yeah, really uh, work on the presentation in the end, uh, um, the final exhibition, artwork, um, and a thesis. In painting, in the first year, um, uh, um, well, uh, it, it's important to um, get to know viewpoints uh, points of past, present, and future. Um, a relationship between perception and cognition, image, language, stable, unstable media. Um, it's not only about painting with the brush, it's also about all the new technology, art and science, and also local and global forms of society. So we um, don't believe in the image of the painter in a closed room, and then after two years, uh, the masterwork is finished. It's really embedded in uh, society and also the other courses. Um, as I said, uh, in the first year, um, it's important to um, explore your possibilities uh, and develop a kind of idea of what your research is about. Uh, you do this in the hybrid arts lab, where you can uh, work on your um, um, artworks, um, where there are projects where you can cross borders or work with other disciplines. and. Um, there are also group sessions with fellow students, experts, and the public. Um, presentations and discussions of the results uh, of these experiments. There are workshops, uh, research projects, and, uh, and also a very uh, a common uh, part in Matic painting and IREP is a collaboration with the Research University of Groningen, where um, uh, students together develop projects uh, and also present it. Um, so this is a very um, yeah, uh, yeah, interesting view uh, towards the other side, not from the only the artists, but also art historians. So you get to know also uh, the more theoretic side of um, the art world, but in a very practical and hands-on way. One important element in our program are the field trips visits to relevant institutions, festivals, and research centers. Um, although it's written here at the first year, um, actually the study trip to New York uh, normally takes place in the second year. And again, normally, um, of course, in this case, is um, inhibited by the situation. Right now, many of these contacts to institutions and festivals are online. Right, as, uh, as the festivals and institutions uh, themselves also. Um, and with the trips, we always are uh, depending on what is 
uh, what is possible at the moment. So New York at this moment is uh, not an option, but it might be next year. So we can't promise that. But um, yeah, we still um, try to make connections with uh, New York and other um, parts of the world. Next slide, please. In the second year, um, there is this uh, implementation of your research plan. So um, the way that you want to develop your artwork towards the final presentation. And um, this will end then with the exhibition of the graduation project. Um, it will not automatically end in awards, <laughs> but there's definitely chances for that because we have some awards which are uh, given internally at the school, but also from the uh, city of Groningen. And um, one of these um, awards is the George Fabek uh, Scholarship, which uh, is a yeah, fine uh, monetary reward, but also uh, enabling research uh, uh, abroad. Um, Okay, next slide, please. Matt Tech in general is um, very similar to painting in the sense that the first year is about um, yeah, broadening your skills and your knowledge and finding uh, new pathways. Although in Matt Tech we have a bit more technical input. Matt Tech stands for Media, Art, Design and Technology. And one of the philosophies that we um, follow is that if you want to research technology, it's important to um, get your hands dirty and yeah, manipulating technology yourself. So we try to uh, build uh, coding um, or programming or electronics into the program. And don't be afraid if you're not uh, a, a programmer but are interested in math tech because we will try to uh, teach you with um, uh, projects and, and tools which are easy for um, novices to uh, to learn. The most important element is uh, if you want to study math tech that you have an affinity with technology that you are interested in getting to know coding. Um, much of the research um, of technology will be uh, carried out um, by yourself, but with the support of um, experts, workshops. Uh, so um, you're not alone in this. And um, for the rest, we have the same setup of um, theory and research courses. Uh, we have uh, um, common experiments, uh, workshops um, with fellow students experts and public. We also at MedTech have a collaboration with the conservatory. So at this moment, we um, are uh, working on a project together with uh, MedTech students and conservatory students who um, work on interdisciplinary artworks, art making uh, across uh, borders of disciplines. Um, and then also in MedTech, in the end, there's a presentation of the final work and uh, the graduation exhibition. Just as uh, in, in uh, painting and IREP, also MATIC students work on a thesis. Um, I'm very happy that, um, that Ray made the time to, to uh, be with us today because it's uh, now the thesis writing time. And I know that it's a very intense uh, research period for students. So uh, things are coming together now and yeah, need very much attention. Um, although the thesis uh, in the Frank Moore Institute is not supposed to be um, a highly uh, academic theoretical work, it is really supposed to be connected uh, in uh, as much as possible ways to your own work, to your own art making. So it's um, more or less of becoming an expert in, in your own art making and uh, finding theoretical elements in that. And it can be a very artistic uh, process and also a product. Uh, the outcome does not have to be uh, um, a typical thesis text. It can also be an artwork. It can be um, imaginative, poetic, uh, full of images. 
it can be a movie. Um, anyway, next slide, please. <laughs> IREP um, follows the same principles, although uh, in, in practice it is um, working in a different way. So um, uh, artists uh, in IREP, they develop their artistic practice from diverse con contexts outside the direct sphere or influence of the art, which means that um, people who study IREP they might already have um, uh, connections to um, communities where they um, uh, conduct artworks um, which are related to that community, or maybe they are uh, embedded in, in uh, another context where art is um, seen as a kind of social um, process also. Um, the artistic practice has transformative power and you can make a change. So that's one of the um, ideas. And also, um, um, yeah, it's about reflecting on your own artistic practice and learning about uh, others' role in diverse context. Um, and for this, uh, this expanding and, uh, and using of um, everybody's own artistic strategies, and material practices uh, and mentality. That's um, yeah, a process which is uh, slightly outside out of our school. People are embedded in their own uh, processes. But of course, um, at least once a week, people also meet and discuss and meet the guest tutors. So it's yeah, basically the same setup. Um, this also makes it a bit less suitable for uh, suitable for uh, the general artist. Well, maybe that's not true. Actually, <laughs> um, maybe Nikki can explain more uh, about this. But um, um, of course, it's uh, for artists and designers in the broadest sense of the world, um, uh, for whom the practice of making has transformative power, and um, for whom actually society is the studio. Um, and who work, uh, enjoy working with other people. So um, I think it's important uh, to already have connections for uh, projects to work in, because I uh, don't think that it is possible to come to IREP and then see where you can do these projects. So it's, um, it's a slightly different setup um, as far as I know. But things are also in development and uh, the second year of IREP uh, st uh, yeah, still has to happen. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so um, some elements are the same. Uh, for example, this collaboration with um, um, the research center of art and society is also um, a special element. Uh, the options to uh, join lectures at the University of Groningen. Um, here's um, yeah, a joint research course with the Research Center of Art and Society and uh, the University of Groningen. Maybe I have to explain a bit about these research centers. Uh, we have two of these uh, research centers um, directly connected to um, Minerva. And um, although the lectors there are uh, um, available for uh, connection and research uh, to all students, um, they have a special connection to the IREP. Um, course. Um, yes, I mentioned the regular sessions uh, for the whole group uh, of students. Um, and that is um, accompanied by individual group visits to relevant institutions, festivals, workspaces, and research centers um, as soon as they're available again. Um, Yes, working on the studio uh, project has a different shape for IREP. Uh, it's extensive time in the field, um, um, experimenting on uh, uh, in collaboration with others, focusing on the own project. Um, uh, there is, um, of course, also visits to international festivals. Um, and often these visits to festivals or uh, places are also conducted with all three courses uh, together. 
normally we start with an introduction uh, trip, uh, for example, the Venice Biennale or uh, other relevant uh, places to get an idea of the broad context of uh, the international art scene. Um, yes, um, I think I covered the others. Um, yeah, I covered the other elements. Um, yes, next slide, please. All right, one important uh, point, of course, uh, is what do you do after the study? So let's talk about the career perspectives. Um, so if you're um, talented and fortunate enough, you can make a good living salary-wise. Um, of course, art also has value which cannot only be measured in money. So uh, if you want to make as much money as possible, art might not always be the, uh, the best choice. But that also um, does not say that um, it will be more difficult than, than other studies. Um, because the creativity that um, is developed in these years uh, is a skill that um, um, is very useful in the wide variety of different industries. Uh, so um, many art graduates, they work in media and marketing. Uh, teaching is of course uh, something that is very often uh, um, also the outcome of what people uh, do. And with a master degree, uh, you are also entitled to do that. Um, with some additional uh, skills, of course. Um, so what we encounter most often uh, is that uh, students develop a hybrid practice. I myself, I'm also an artist and a teacher. So this hybrid construction is very, uh, very common because it gives you the freedom to uh, find your own balance of artistic freedom and um, things that you, um, yeah, give you the, the security of a job. Although, of course, um, it is perfectly possible to also become an um, independent artist and um, a, a lift from your artistic practice. So, um, in order to facilitate this, um, yeah, this pathfinding, um, we will uh, look for chances for students to uh, speak to professionals in the industry, from professional artists to curators. Um, and um, uh, visit art fairs and um, festivals um, to um, yeah, learn networking skills, uh, all these elements which are important to um, yeah, show what you can do and how you want to do it. Um, IREP, um, uh, they uh, work actually in the field and um, by this, they enable the graduates also to secure a, a constant and prominent position on the var uh, various platforms within this field of uh, international art practices. So um, one thing which is um, a nice addition is this ability to do this um, uh, yeah, artistic uh, uh, PhD, which Nick already mentioned. And within IREP, uh, yeah, this development is uh, uh, embedded into the uh, idea. Um, one immediate concern, of course, is for people who want to develop their career in the Netherlands, there is this search uh, year visa. So um, if you uh, earned a master degrees or PhD from a top 200 university uh, within the last three years you could qualify for a dutch residence permit to look for a job as a highly skilled migrant and um, the dutch highly educated migrant search year visa gives recent graduates uh, from internationally recognized universities uh, the opportunity to live in the netherlands for one year to find a job as a highly skilled migrant um, okay next uh, slide please so um, over the years, we collected, of course, um, yeah, a big group of alumni, and we tried to stay in co contact with them and uh, try to um, follow them and uh, see what their proceedings are. 
we can say um, um, that yeah we're happy to say that um, our school uh, appears to pre uh, prepare them well for their after school life um, you couldn't say characteristics of a successful alum alumni are uh, that they take initi uh, initiative and take risk they are uh, perseverant um, they have good communication skills um, which includes listening and critical reflection and um, are curious and open-minded and i think uh, the last one is also yeah a very uh, important element um, because if you have a, a a set path uh, already in mind, then yeah, it might uh, require different steps. But uh, uh, in our school, this open-mindedness and looking for opportunities and finding your own path, uh, and for um, uh, also uh, becoming a kind of uh, yeah, for a way to um, display this own uh, view and and uh, a skill set is a big element. Okay, um, indeed, uh, one link to an alumnus of uh, Mad Tech is uh, Xin Yu Cheng. Uh, you can visit his uh, website. Thank you, Nikki, for posting that in a clickable form. Um, Xin Yu um, uh, actually, um, all these uh, correct characteristics of a successful alumnus, um, yeah, are. Um, uh, have been part of what XNU is and does. Um, I've been uh, uh, always very surprised by what uh, pathways he chose um, in, uh, in viewpoints and translating that into artworks, which uh, yeah, speak to the imagination. So please look up his, uh, his work and uh, if you meet him, say hi. Uh, next slide, please. No portfolio preparation. Well, for that, I need to drink a sip of tea. Just a second. By the way, excellent tea from Taiwan, which a friend brought. <laughs> uh, but it's just a coincidence. Um, OK. Um, the portfolio, um, of course, it's a way to display previous work. Uh, designs, drawings, paintings, craft, whatever medium uh, your uh, work uh, needs. Um, that uh, we focus on the conceptual way of thinking. So that should be somehow uh, evident from your uh, portfolio. So it's not about choosing uh, like the best artwork and, and putting a couple of those together, but it's also um, you were looking for uh, a way to see how your um, thinking maybe developed, uh, developed how your um, um, working process um, takes place. So we encourage you to also include sketches to give context for your research, for your image. So. Um, It sounds very finite. Uh, we have to include 20 images uh, or other visual and sound documentation um, characterizing your work well and giving a clear, clear picture of your qualities as an artist. Um, although, of course, that depends, it depends very much on which way uh, you work, what is your medium. Um, if, for example, you um, presented a lot of work, or you, you had made a lot of work in, in product design, but want to develop further to um, you know, include the role of technology. Um, and maybe you only have sketches on how that, please include them too. So uh, we are not looking for uh, totally finished and polished uh, portfolios, but something which tells the most um, about you. Um, that's why we also asked for a letter of motivation. And uh, we have a questionnaire with uh, some questions. Uh, don't be worried if, if uh, these questions um, uh, seem to be very, yeah, uh, asking for a lot of information. It's mo mostly for um, giving us an idea of who you are and 
why you choose to come uh, to apply for the Frank Moore Institute and specifically for one of the three masters. So what is your uh, motivation to apply for painting or med tech? Um, because the whole point of this portfolio is to find a match between uh, an applicant and the education. So we need to know that somebody can thrive within the Frank Moore Institute, that we can offer what um, an applicant needs. And um, so it's, yeah, actually the whole process is about that, making sure that uh, somebody who comes actually will find what uh, what is important to bring this person further. So that's the, also the role of the questions uh, about the motivation and uh, previous skills and uh, um, the application will be uh, will be assessed by an admission committee. So we look through all the portfolios and questions. And um, if we see that indeed uh, the applicant knows what he or she or uh, they are applying for, um, and that we see, yes, the ideas or plans, uh, they uh, fit into what we have to offer. And also that indeed the uh, level is um, something that is uh, a good starting point for the master. Then we invite the applicant for the next stage and that is an interview which can be conducted online. So then we can discuss uh, your ideas and um, plans and wishes and maybe also solve some questions. And um, if that succeeds, then you are admitted. Uh, next slide, please. So for this year, um, there's only one admission round left for non-European students. Um, so um, please be very quick with that <laughs> uh, because the whole procedure of uh, immigration takes a while. So as soon, uh, the sooner we can um, uh, proceed, the better. Uh, of course, I understand that many of you are um, applying uh, or are also interested in joining only in the next year. So if more time indeed to, to prepare stuff to inform what is really uh, the best fit for you. Technical requirements are bachelor's uh, degree, an art or an equi uh, equivalent university degree or a qualification in a related area. So it doesn't have to be a art bachelor. It can be something that is um, yeah, equivalent or also relevant for your plan. Although, of course, uh, in the end, the environment uh, is um, an art academy. Um, as you might have noticed by now, um, we talk a lot at the Frank Moore Institute and we do that in English. So in order to participate in the communication, it's uh, important to have uh, yeah, a good level of uh, English. Um, there is a, a technical demand. Uh, so there is a kind of uh, minimum grade in the uh, IELTS or TOEFL test. Um, but also the main point is that we can communicate so um, that we understand your ideas and that you can um, yeah, understand and react to what other people are telling. So it's not too, um, yeah, it's an important element. Um, another um, uh, important thing is to that you give a broad outline of the artistic research you want to carry out. And that doesn't have to be a detailed plan because actually the whole um, program is about also finding new pathways and uh, going them. So it doesn't have to be defined in the beginning, but also it is a very free and open program. So there's lots of um, possibilities to for you to um, find your own path. And uh, we uh, yeah, think it's very important that you have an initial direction that you want to go. So um, otherwise the freedom can also be problematic. You have to start somewhere and um, you can outline that. 
Yes, next slide, please. And I think we are uh, nearing uh, the end of this presentation. Um, OK, so there's a clear procedure. Uh, enroll through studylink.nl. Uh, there you can choose which um, part of the Master of Arts in Fine Art and Design you want to apply for. And uh, then you follow the procedure. We will get uh, this um, uh, portfolio, uh, judge it, and um, yeah, you can see the other requirements. Uh, as soon as we receive that, we will uh, look at it, uh, maybe uh, invite you for an interview, and then evaluate. All right, that's this. Practical matters. Um, Nikki, do you want to take over or should I continue? What is your... Sure. Yeah, I can take over. You can have some tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Indeed, I need some more tea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, practical matters uh, is mostly about finances and uh, housing, uh, which we do get a lot of questions from uh, people. Um, what to expect? We have a tuition fee that is approximately 7,700 euros um, a year and then additionally, you can expect um, some extra costs that may vary because of uh, the content of the program. And uh, you can think about uh, social activities or study books, which is approximately 800 euros a year, says, um, says Hansa. Then you have student uh, rent for student rooms to take into account, which is uh, available from starting from 350, but you can make that as uh, less and much expensive as you want. And then cost of living and you can find um, all the information and the breakdown of the expected costs uh, on the Hansa website and I will uh, copy the link later on in the chat where you can click it and Hansa has a very extensive um, uh, website for international students where you can find all these kinds of things also about scholarships and other possibilities for funding that you can use to uh, apply for study in the Netherlands um, and also it is good to know that you have to start uh, on time with finding room and housing in the in the city of Groningen. And um, you can use this social network that we have uh, to find it because we don't have a campus with uh, housing on it. So you have to find a student room. Um, well, and that is actually the end of our uh, very uh, talkative presentation, but I can uh, imagine that you have lots of questions um, for our students and um, you may ask them in the chat or turn on your microphone and ask them immediately. And maybe Ray also has something she can share herself um, already. Yeah, hello. Um... Shall we stop the presentation? Um, yeah, I will turn it off. Yes. Um, uh, thank you, Yang and Nikki. And um, if you have a question, you can Should I share something? Or... <laughs> Yeah, maybe I can share some photos of um, our program. Uh, okay, Nick, uh, I, I think, you know, uh, before everyone asks their questions, I actually have a few questions to ask you, okay? Especially, you know, I think to uh, Nikki and Yang first. Yes. So I, I guess, you know, 
the other Taiwanese uh, students are uh, uh, online with us. They are still thinking about you know their questions, which they would either ask or raise. But anyway, I I will ask uh, both of you some questions first. The first question, I I'm often asked by Taiwanese students because. Uh, this question, because they believe that in the Netherlands, they are the so-called uh, highly ranked uh, art academy. There are also some other uh, art academies which are not worth considering. And a lot of them are telling me that they believe that uh, the Royal Academy of Art in The Hague is the best choice. They are also telling me that uh, the uh, academy, uh, the design academy in Andalven is actually the best choice for them. So, you know, uh, for us, we would like to provide the best possible information, transparent information to our students. But when we get this kind of question, I know it's not true because I'm always telling them that it's about, you know, the match between you and the art academy. This is also something Yang has already mentioned during his presentation and also before we start this webinar that uh, you know a good match is the most important thing but uh, both of you are Dutch you know the Dutch uh, you know art and design environment better than anybody else because most of the tiny students who are with us tonight they have never been to the Netherlands. They have never visited those art academies. They have no idea. All they get is the information from someone who wrote, uh, you know, on the internet. So can you briefly tell us, or, or can you, you know, tell us, is that true that uh, there are only some good art academies that students can choose or you have a different observation. Can you answer it, Jan, or should I? <laughs> well, the first thing is uh, I'm actually German. <laughs> I'm a German. That is, that's even better, you know, because you can yes. you can share your view from a German perspective, right? Yes, and I came to the Netherlands to study actually at the conservatory in Groningen uh, because, uh, yeah, I loved Groningen. I, I know, um, yeah, lots of Germany. I also knew the rest of the Netherlands, but uh, apart that Groningen is very close to my hometown, uh, I know I knew the atmosphere here. So the um, concentration of energy um, really attracted me because it's, um, yeah, a special town. It's, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's because of the high grade uh, of, of students in the town, uh, it's a very special um, energy, always refreshing itself, but uh, also some alumni uh, yeah, tend to stay here. It's maybe less touristic than Amsterdam. And if you ask people from abroad, they will say, which is the best Dutch town? They will say, oh yeah, Amsterdam, because that's what people know from uh, from television or whatever, uh, and maybe that's uh, the thing. Same thing about the art academies. I don't know. Some are bigger. Some are uh, more well known in terms of names. Um, even um, our students probably don't know who Frank Moore actually is. <laughs> it's not a famous painter or so. So it's a it's a, it's just a special case in that sense. But um, I think our strong point really is the strong match that we want to make between uh, what students are looking for and what we offer, together with this uh, individual approach that we try to see people as good as possible, 
and work on uh, individual processes. Um, plus this yeah, specific mix, uh, each um, of our uh, courses has a very yeah, distinct philosophy. For example, painting, um, not only focusing on painting in the traditional uh, way, but employing this um, yeah, uh, painterly uh, look and 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 yeah, the the way to connect uh, the tradition with uh, also other technologies uh, with the future and the past. So it's a very specific um, uh, point of view. And the same is about MadTech, this mix of uh, um, yeah experimentation cross disciplinarity. Um, yeah, it doesn't fit for everybody, and especially also the the freedom that you have within the course. It's uh, yeah, it's it maybe is uh, not fitting to everybody, but who is looking for something like that? Uh, I think uh, it makes sense. So, um, and just as we don't judge uh, our portfolios in a way of absolute um, uh, quality, we cannot say, oh, this painting of the applicant is a, is a 10 or so. We try to see uh, the whole. I think also it's important to, to judge the university that you go to not as a yeah as a kind of absolute uh, uh, valuing um, with an absolute valuing system, but to yeah to see what the whole um, combination of uh, uh, school uh, 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 philosophy, city, and background gives to you, and that might for some people definitely be The Hague or, or Amsterdam. But I truly believe also in the strengths of Groningen and the Frank Moore Institute. And what also might be a good addition is that if you live in the Netherlands and you live, for example, in Groningen, it's very easy to take a train ride and go to, for example, Den Haag or Rotterdam or Amsterdam and visit all these cultural locations there. And it's about two to three hours with, a, with the train. Um, which is really close by. We're not a big country. So if you're looking to be in uh, proximity of any cultural location or anything else, then um, you don't have to live in the exact city to visit them easily. Can I, can I ask the same question? Uh, you know, I would like to ask Rei Zi the same question because she's the one who has made the decision to come to study at your academy in Groningen. And she should be the person who has done a lot of research about which are the academy to choose in the Netherlands. So, Reitz, uh, can you tell me a little bit about how many schools are so many? 艺术学院艺术跟设计学院那么多你为什么最后选择了你现在就读的汉斯的这个 uh, Frank Moore uh, Institute 而不是其他的荷兰的艺术学院呢你这些观察是什么因为很多同学都说连艺术学院都有分这个排名啊高下了好像不去念个很有名的对不起自己你的看法是什么 其实在我来和这个学校学校其实觉得要出间台湾比较多人知道的学校才会比较未来比较有帮助但是我那时候觉得嗯我是在我在台湾的时候是美术系毕业的然后主要是去艺术在台湾方向前进然后有很多其他艺术的研究所他们就是让你做比较理论或是发展这些东西但是我想要学更多东西然后刚好我想要去设计设计更多的自闭 
所以我觉得，我选择这两个学校，我除了就是就不要有那种迷失，就是看你的特色是不是真的符合你的需求，然后是不是真的你想要可以。就是在合适的时间里面学习到的东西，我觉得这个比较重要。好，非常谢谢哈、哦。And also, uh, when we are still waiting for more questions from the audience, I think I have another question. Uh, I think you have seen, you know, uh, especially. About the fields of interests indicated by、uh, the students who are joining the session tonight, and some of them would like to study art and、uh, management, and some people they would like to study furniture design, and some people are interested in industrial design, and some. Indicates that they are interested in user experience design, and anyway, this list can go on and go on and go on. And for instance, when we checked, you know, some programs offered by、uh, some art academy in the Netherlands, and when you go to their website, and then you can find that they provide programs for graphic design. They also have program for interactive media design, also programs for interior architecture and furniture design, and also program for photography. Also, you know, this list can go on and go on. And you know, now it's very, uh, uh, let's say, confusing because、uh, the programs you offer, especially the medtech. And also、uh, the new program, and if I'm the, the the students who are joining this session, who have expressed their interest in in so many different、uh, art and design fields, is your are your programs the right fit for me? And、uh, how do I know? Can you briefly? Explain about you know how you guide the students because、uh, especially to find the right match.、Mm-hmm. Yes, it、uh, of course very much depends on on what people are really looking for. So if somebody, for example, did product design、uh, for the bachelor and wants to do a master in product design. Then I would say、uh, apply for a school which offers a course in product design.、Uh, we don't do that,、um, although there might be the chance that、um, this students、uh, who studied product design is concerned with、uh, the role that technology plays、uh, with these product.、Uh, that that、um, how、uh, technology or, or the design influences people. That uh, uh, this person wants to artistically research this、um, this way that、uh, yeah the the elements media art design technology interact so then it goes further than just learning to be a better product designer but it also is about understanding uh, uh, mechanics that are involved and trying to do that with a kind of、uh, artistic Uh, a research process by making experimental installations for uh, uh, understanding on how people interact. So th- th- there are so many ways to to、um, to try to understand what actually is going on when somebody uh, uh, experiences、uh, media, art, design, and technology, and、um, Students that want to research this in an experimental, artistic way, they should apply for the Frank、uh, Moore Institute. If you just want to develop your specific skills further, 
and I'm not saying that is uh, is bad or or um, I would yeah I would not discourage that. Then it's better to really look for a university that offers a specific course for that. Um, well, you can also develop um, further, of course, in your uh, previous uh, skills. Um, we have, yeah, our program is not set up in a way to uh, give uh, education in all these uh, possible backgrounds. Um, we look for for common research questions and for um, yeah, entry points for artists to research this in an artistic way. And yeah, for example, people who already work in a design practice for years uh, have their own design company. They come to Matt Tech, for example, to um, yeah to uh, research the role of um, of nature in in technology and make artistic processes with, with for example, researching uh, a field, the landscape, all the elements that are involved. They build technology, uh, technological tools in order to research this, find new ways of presenting the outcome, of finding ways to discovering relationships. So it's, it's, it goes much further than just to design a specific project. It's also about, yeah, trying to research connections to uh, connect ideas and people to communicate this in an artistic way so yeah that's why experiment and open mindset are so important for for us i don't know if that answered the question um yes it's a very good answer i would also like to ask uh, Ray Tzu the same question because uh uh, she's actually, you know, that's a studying and learning with uh, a lot of artists from all sorts of different backgrounds. And she is also the student in the program who knows about, you know, the objectives and also purposes of the other students. Perhaps she can share her view uh, in order to help, uh, you know, the students tonight who are with us. So, 那个类似想问你刚才那个问题哦不知道要干什么我觉得有自己想要有自己的目标我觉得他们想要在这个课程里面我觉得这也是我选择来这里
I, I guess uh, we, we should give a little bit more time to uh, the students who are with us online if they have any questions. Uh, uh, Shenwang,呃,和来念艺术学院,你很想要了解的问题,请各位可不可以下来提出,因为我刚刚试着要等大家问问题,所以我就提问了一些,呃,可能比较常见的一些事情。那各位如果有什么问题的话,可不可以,
就是然后如果需要一些生活用品，你可以上网订购，或是嗯可以预约商店，然后美术馆跟博物馆或是画廊都都可以预约参观，所以我觉得。嗯，现在这个时候，其实我们生活并没有受到太多的影响。嗯。其他的同学想要询问，都可以提出。其他的同学有任何问题想要询问，都可以提出。So perhaps、uh, I would like to ask、uh, Rei Ci、uh, one question, which is about you know her preparation、uh, for finding a job、mm-hmm. after her graduation. And I would like I I know maybe this is a little bit、uh, premature, but but、uh, since she has already done her first year, I guess this is something she will sooner or later to face、uh, this problem. So. 那个瑞斯，你可不可以讲一下，就是说哈，因为你你都念完第一年了、嗯，你觉得第二年结束之后呢，你接下来的那个呃工作上面的准备，你你现在跟之后你打算要怎么做？然后你看到你们班上的这些同学，大家又是怎么样子行动的，跟规划的？其实，嗯，我自己的规划是我会申请 search year， 然后。在十二月前半年，我会想多留一些时间，就是申请一些艺术驻村或是一些艺术的奖项，然后同时可以，嗯，看有没有什么适合的工作。我觉得 search year 荷兰的 search year 是一个蛮有帮助的事情，就是假如你没有很迫切的金钱压力，然后或是你就可以多留。一年，然后看有什么更多的可能性。然后，嗯，我们班的同学，嗯，目前是大家都会想要多留什么，然后就是比较，呃，比较，嗯，是，就有些有些人还是会想要回去自己的国家发展，嗯，但是我就是已经毕业的那一届，我的学长姐们，他们。嗯，也是大部分的人都还留在这里，然后申请奖项或是找助生或是找工作。嗯，但是呃、嗯，可能因为疫情的关系，现在这阵子的工作并没有这么顺利。嗯，所以大家应该都会需要多一点时间做准备。嗯。好，谢谢。那。呃，其他线上同学还有问题要询问的吗？ Okay, since we have no more questions from the audience, I would very much like to thank、uh, Nikki, Yang, and also Rei Ci、uh, for your contribution tonight. I think we have learned a lot from your Uh, presentations and also from,、uh, you know, everything you share with us tonight. And I'm not sure if、uh, Nikki Yang or、uh, Rei Ci, you have anything to say before we、uh, leave this、uh, session. Yes, I want to, of course, thank you as well for the opportunity to talk to all of you guys. And、um, I would like to add that、um, it is possible to visit the open day if you are interested in knowing more about studying at Hansa UAS or at the Bachelor Studies.、Um, we have an open day at the 26th of March, and I will.、Uh, you can find it in the link that I just chatted in the chat. And also, you can、uh, email us, and I will provide you with the email in the chat as well to take um, um, tester. Um, how do you say that tester、um, classes with a, a master program? 
and you can do that by sending an email to this email address and they will uh, talk to you about this and you can also email there for more information about the masters or any questions you might think of after this session yes i uh, also would like to thank you uh, of course <laughs> ray for making time in your uh, <laughs> uh, thesis preparation time um Jewel for putting this together and Nikki for preparing the presentation and of course everybody for attending good luck with your path i hope you'll find a good match to whatever you uh, are looking for thank you so much everyone <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, and I hope that you have a nice day there. Thank See you, you soon again. Bye-bye. <laughs>